Hello and welcome to Trojans Live. One of our favorite guests, Kadani McAlpine, joins us now. He is the head coach of USC women's soccer, a, um, a fall sport or so it used to be. What do we know, Coach? When do you, when do you get to play again? What's your, what have you been told? Well, before I, before I answer that, I, I thought you were going to mention Charlie Ward in the last segment. I'm just saying. <laughs> so he actually did play basketball. That's okay. That's true. That is. The, is you think that is that the best example of the of the football basketball guy? Tony Gonzalez was very good at Cal. Yeah, he was good at Cal, but but the fact that he played Heisman into the yeah. pros in basketball at a pretty decent level. I'm just saying. The, I'm just saying those other guys did it pro pro. True, pro, true, pro. true, true. It's, trust me, having spent some time at, at Auburn, I, I know a little bit you about. I know a little you know bit Bo. about Bo. <laughs> have you have you met Bo? Uh, I, I have met him in passing. Yes, I have. It's hard not to in Auburn, man. It's hard not to. Yeah, that's a legend right there. No doubt. Um, <laughs> so what are, what are we doing? Uh, the NCAA has said that uh, we're going to play in the spring. Um, we're hoping to get everybody on, back on campus on uh, in and around January, early January, so that we can uh, start games early February. Um, the NCAA tournament's looking like it's going to be May 13 to 15. Um, and, and everything in between, we're still trying to figure out the details on the schedule, but that's kind of where we are right now. Coach, what is like fit, today, what does training and communication look like with your team? And how are, how are you guys handling that uh, during this time? Well, we got fortunate. Um, being a fall sport, uh, many of our women were, were already reporting to campus and uh, we were looking to go. Um, but as football has started to, to move, we've been able to bring the last of our, our women on campus. So uh, this week, today in particular, we got to, to begin with a little bit more activities that look like the game. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, we're blessed to be able to do it because you could tell um, having a little routine, having a little, a little something that feels normal. Um, you can see it in their, in their energy levels as they've shifted throughout the semester. Those that have been here the whole time or are pretty close to it. Um, you get to see their energy shift. You can see the ones that have been left out getting here and, and being able to feel the energy of it. Um, and so we're, we're, we're not quite normal, normal, but we're as close as we can get um, with our training and our numbers and, and just kind of getting some extra reps in, some that we missed from the spring. Now you're a coach who, who thinks about everything, not just the X's and O's. You, you know, you, you think about building the whole team concept. And I, I've listened to so many uh, coaches talk about this and, you know, the team can't even have meals together. I mean, there's little things that there's just so little bonding that's really available other than the training sessions uh, when you're running them so hard. So you, they probably can't even speak to each other. How, how, how are you building camaraderie, uh, you know, which is, you know, I, I know something that, that you value on, on your team when, when connection is so hard these days. Uh, you know, it's, it's been difficult. Um, it's been very difficult. And so we've had to rely on, you know, strength and conditioning. Jill has, has done a, a good job of creating competition, fun competition, and little things like that within the strength and conditioning program, just to provide little moments, the little stories that ordinarily you get hanging out together, you're starting to get while you're in training. Um, we, we try to laugh a little bit, even in training, though they're, they're, they're fatigued and though they're trying to, trying to uh, just figure things out. You can see the freshmen just trying to figure it out. We try to laugh a little bit. We try to crack a joke here and there simply so that some of the personalities can come out. Um, and then we rely on our, our upperclassmen and, and their understanding of what our culture is to reach out to the others, to try to make sure they connect with each other and, and keep everybody as one. And then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try to hold a meeting or two on a Saturday and, and have some moments where we can at least uh, be in the same space, socially distance, of course, um, <laughs> but, but definitely be in the same space outdoors and uh, just spend some time. Um, because it's needed, it's necessary for, for these these teams to gel the way they should in order to, to make a run. Hey, you talk about that run, Coach. Last year, you guys made a run in the NCAAs uh, into the quarterfinals. Uh, how do you build on that from last year? And what is this 2020 team? Obviously, a, a great recruiting class, it looks like. Got some uh, young women that, that can play. You bring in the Lily Perriman from Boston College. What, 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 do you got, what is this 2020 team going to look like? Uh, you know what? Last year, last year, I would say I was I was really proud of that team, and even more so proud of our coaches and support staff because that team in particular, with all the injuries and 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 whatnot that that we dealt with, um, made a run probably against the odds. And it's that experience that I'm excited about because 
not only do we did we have a young group last year that a lot of them didn't play but through injuries and whatnot, we had some key people out. Um, you know, when you want to talk about goalkeepers, Kaylee Collins was out for a large part of the year, but we had Anna step up and do an unbelievable job. Um, but you also, we lost out on Savannah DeMello, and, and she provides something that's just different than most people in the country. Um, but what's crazy is we also missed out on some of the young people that were built, brought in to ultimately replace some of those personalities. So um, I think we add a lot without even adding the freshmen, but then we get a great freshman class. I think we're going to be incredibly strong on the front end, returning a lot of our goals in, in, uh, in Terra and in Penelope. We add a, a Jen Westendorf. Um, who's, who's a phenomenal goal scorer um, and, and Brazilian youth national. Um, and on the back end, we're, we're going to have to plug some big holes. You know, you lose a, a Jalen, you lose a Ashley, you, uh, you lose Bing, stalwart for us defensively. But um, we got a lot of minutes out of some young people last year that I think are going to anchor us a bit and hopefully let our offense carry us a little bit more. <laughs> The last few years, Coach, have been great for, for the growth of women's professional sports. I mean, it, it was pretty stagnant there for a long time where you had women's tennis, but there just was not a lot. Uh, the WNBA has been uh, is come on fantastically over the last decade, and now I feel like we're seeing it with the NWSL, but not even just that. You know, I'm seeing all these people going over, and the, the Women's Premier League is taking off in, in England. What does that mean for your sport? But But – just sort of how you're able to approach athletes now that there is a, maybe much more of a, of a life after uh, USC that, you know, other than there was always, hey, okay, there's a top 20, you know, that could play in the national team, but that was so limiting. Now it looks like you could really be a professional soccer player. No, I, I, you're right. Um, the record crowds that, that were set in the, the last year in terms of uh, teams playing abroad, women's teams playing abroad, you look at the, the growth in, in England in particular, um, and and Ashley, uh, Ashley's gone back and, and, and it helped lead Leicester to a, a professional team now. They were, they were semi-professional, so she's in that. Um, but I, I think what we're starting to see is uh, women who are really great athletes, who can actually think about being professionals, that happen to be really great students, um, actually plan to be great professionals, actually plan to, to not be afraid to go abroad because they have friends who are doing it, not be afraid to 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 really aspire as new teams are added to the NWSL. One of them, namely, you know, Angel City coming here to LA, um, which we're excited about in 22. Um, so I, I think you just get more players that, that dream a little bit more about, may, okay, maybe I'm not the national team player, but I can still play the game that I love for a long time. Coach, I, I, was, I wanted to ask you this, you know, it's, it's obviously there's a pandemic going on in our country, but also a time of social unrest. Uh, being, being a head coach and being a black man who, who coaches not only black players, but, but white players, what's your message been to your players uh, through these times of social, social unrest? And, and what are you saying to, to these women to, to hopefully, you know, a, a message you pass to them? Well, we, uh, we just have dialogue. Let's, let's get to know each other. Let's truly get to know each other. Let's take the time to understand each other's hurts. Let's understand each other. And, and why are we even, why are, why are people upset in the first place? Let's make sure we go back. Let's, let's watch some movies. Let's read some things. Let's find out about what is it that everybody's upset about so that now we can gain some understanding. And if we, if we as a group can gain some understanding and have some great dialogue and learn to accept each other and learn to, to stick up and stand up for each other in, in, in moments, then maybe we can carry that dialogue outside of our team and it can be a broader growth uh, effort. And, and, and I think you see it across um, our department with, with the UBSAA, with the, the Black Lives Matter Action Team. I think you see those kind of conversations and that communication happening. And I think that's exactly what we need. It, it's not gonna stop with just our team. It's not gonna stop with just you know, our group getting along. And, and we're not all on the same page. We're all learning. And everybody learns at different, different levels and, and, and different, uh, different ways. So we, gotta, we just got to stay with it and be patient, but, but spend time in it. Be willing to accept each other. Be willing to talk to each other. Be willing to get to know each other. Soccer's been great, too. I mean, it must make you proud, just the global response. I mean, we, so much of what we dealt with was this American thing. And all of a sudden, you saw, wait, other people around the world are watching it. And the reason we, part of the reason we knew was because of soccer. And, and, and it just, we talk about it being the global game, but, but what a sort of cool way to, to demonstrate that in, in 2020. 
it's been amazing. And, and I also will say, you know, with the number of Americans and everybody, you know, jokes about the American men in particular not being able to play. We've got a lot of Americans abroad and, and their, their voices are being heard. They're able to have conversations, but this just isn't an American problem. Uh, this is a world problem. And, and, and I think by soccer leading the way and, and, and being, being beacon, so to speak, everybody, especially because soccer was out early. Soccer was one of the first, first sports to return. Um, and by them being out early, it shows you that we're not in this by ourselves. This is not just a, a U.S. thing. This is a world thing. This happens. This is real. Um, and we have to treat it as such. And so uh, I'm, I'm super excited that soccer could be out there and doing it. But I think, you know, they're just, they're just reminding us of how real this thing is and, and how much we all have to, to work to make it better for everybody and not just, not just think about the U.S. But this, this, is a, this is a thing. This is real. Racism is real. Um, injustice is real. And we have to treat it as such. Donnie McAlpine, a, uh, a member of the USC Black Lives Matter Action Team, a great leader for USC women's soccer. And I, and I just want you to take note, Sean, that's, this is what a background is supposed to look like for people that, that can't see. Coach is set up. He's got a national championship trophy just casually over his left shoulder. He's got a signed jersey just casually over his right while Sean broadcasts from a, a white void. Man, just i got to look at my game. I'll, take, I'll talk to him in the, in the break, Coach. This is attentional detail. This is why he's great at what he does. Attention to detail. That's Coach Kadani McAlpine.